into the code. Yeah. <sighs> mm, some more coffee. All right, so. A bit sick for the past week, but uh, you're making it. All right. Yeah, I, I thought I um, I was lurking in your stream. You're, uh, you've been playing Fallout 4 for a little bit now, uh, I think. But uh, uh, watching, not listening, as I have uh, other things going on. But uh, hope you feel better. Um, so, last Sunday, what were we doing? WebSocket stuff, right? So, I wanted to make it so that the task uh, service could push a message back to the front end saying, hey, the, the job is done. Oh, you're welcome, you're welcome. Um, see when the uh, when the task is done, right? So I can I can open this panel. I mean, see, you know, the, the 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 two jobs that I just started right before the stream here today, um, they are processing. Uh, according to this, I can refresh and it'll it'll update. There, there wasn't an update, but if there was, it would be updated. And then I can also check the status of the task here, and we can see task running. Um, and we can see in the console something else. Um, I did uh, make a little bit of progress. You're gonna walk the <laughs> the pepperoni and grab breakfast, lunch. All right, all right. I mean, if if it is the first meal of your day, regardless of the time, I guess it is a breakfast. Um, yeah. So we got the message from the server over here. Hey, task status change. New status processing, previous status queued, and then all of the details of the task uh, is in that message as well. We're just dumping the whole thing. Uh, maybe that'll change in the future, but that's fine for now. Uh, it looks like we were disconnected for some reason. Um, reason unknown. Code 1006. What does it mean? I don't know. Um, that's interesting. So does that mean, let's go to a different stream. Go to one that has, um, here we go. Has transcription. Transcript. Oh, it is running. Okay, that's that one thinking maybe um, so something and, and we've seen this a couple of times uh, that I've not quite figured out how to fix that uh, seems to be related to the interaction between the emotion styling and material UI and um, just the fact that some of the forms in this UI have a ton of fields. Actually, not really a lot, you know? I mean, is, is this a lot? I don't know. Um, but there's something going on here that is making this be really slow when I try to save it. So I'm not gonna do that right now because it just freezes everything. Um, if I, I, eventually it's like, hey, do you wanna, because I have the dev tools open, I'll be like, do you want to debug the scripts? I can hit debug and then resume and then it works, which is interesting. And it's probably a clue as to what what's going on. Um, but I don't want to debug that right now. I think eventually I'm going to, um, I have a separate project to uh, set up React Admin with uh, Tailwind instead of Material UI. And so that, that's kind of the, the avenue I want to go with that. But anyway, um, what I want to test right now is if I were to just go to audio and I were to, we already have silence detection done, but I can queue it up again, right? Um, okay, so we are properly disconnected. Um, okay, 
so anyway, so I I kind of jumped into the middle. Let me uh, let me catch you all up on what's the what's changed since uh, last Sunday, right? So one thing that um, um, some type stuff here. Uh, let's see. Is there an example of? Okay, so. Let me see if I can find an example of what I want to explain. Um, maybe in types. I moved around no, in here. Ah, right, right, right. Here we go. So, um, ignoring the fact that, hey, it's a new file, new stuff. Um, a problem that I kept having um, that I figured out was ESLint was complaining about my type signatures. And obviously, what was happening? It was it was it was obvious then, <laughs> um, and it was it was a key piece of information that I realized something in ESLint was not set up right. But um, basically, I was getting an error that message it was defined was not being used, which makes absolutely no sense in a type signature in TypeScript. Obviously, it's not being used because this is this is a type. It's not code. It's not being run. So. That, that is, that's a nonsensical uh, linting uh, message. But what I was doing, instead of fixing the problem, I was telling it just to ignore that. And that that's fine because the name is just uh, informative, right? It shows up in the type. But, um, you know, it's a symptom that something is not set up right. And that something is um, previously, let's look at the def. So previously I had ESLint recommended here. Um, and for some reason I didn't have the TypeScript ESLint stuff added at all. And that's what I needed. I needed uh, the TypeScript ESLint plugin uh, recommended um, rules. And so that was not enough though. It's not enough just to add that. You still get ESLint errors about things like no unused vars. Uh, so apparently you need to remove that too. And it's been a while since I've set up a project. So uh, there you go. Um, cool. So that, that made those, uh, the, those nonsense errors go away. They were errors about JavaScript and that type, TypeScript. Um, so that was uh, not anything to do with the work at hand, but just something that kept on being annoying and was something that then started surfacing other uh, things that I did would want to address. Um, so I had to do some things around um, giving a type for this, uh, for this method, um, do a workaround to tell Hey, uh, TypeScript, this is actually a data provider, really. I know I, I know it doesn't look like one. Uh, to make uh, things happy. Um, and yeah, starting to switch away from any. Uh, ideally, you know, we'd use proper types, but uh, I'll do that at some point. Uh, anyway, so some some consequences of actually having ESLint properly working are uh, it yelling about me when I'm doing uh, bad things. Uh, so let's see. Okay, what else did uh, I think? Why did this change from a let to a const? Uh, oh, maybe that was like a auto fix from ESLint. Okay, probably. I don't remember changing that. Um, okay, and then, so the main thing last stream, um, or at least the, the last big thing we were working on last stream was, um, so we had the back end stuff for the WebSocket, and then we started working on the front end, and we were looking at kind of going from the front backwards, I think. Right, so the idea here is that 
Uh, what's the idea? All oh, right, right, right. So wherever we are in the UI, we have in the, the uh, nav bar at, at the top, we have this little icon. And the idea is going to be that every time, every time there's a task update or something like that, that we would have a little badge, a little number here that would say how many things are, uh, you know, changed or active or something like that. Um, and then kind of proceeding from that to implement what we need to implement to make the number go up. Uh, all right, all right. So I think it was like the number goes up every time there's a status update. And then when you click the button to open the drawer to see the list of tasks, that resets the number. I think that's where that landed. Um, so the way uh, this was going to work was, so we have the badge and it has this count and this count and this marked viewed function is coming from this hook, this custom hook, use task status subscription. Um, and then otherwise, uh, the button is just a button that calls on click. It's passed in as the prop from wherever we're using the button um, in the UI. So then we have this use task uh, status subscription, um, which it's a, a new file. So we just have the whole thing. Um, right. So we have we have a couple layers. So we have the, the button and then we have a hook. The hook then takes care of keeping track of the tasks and the counts of the task. Um, so let's let's see here. Like here's here's this event task status change, and so task status change is an event we're looking for, and we're looking to increase the count whenever there's a task status change, um, and then if there is a reset type event, then we reset the count. And so I'm using this user reducer so that I can call dispatch. And the idea is that when this hook is used in a component, um, we are going to um, essentially use, use an effect saying that hey if uh when the when the parent component is mounted we're gonna we're gonna call subscribe to task status on our data provider and the data provider is the react admin kind of abstraction for talking to the back end so that's the, the like the next layer right so we have the the button and the hook and then the data provider um and so this this um code has changed slightly from where it was because um, yeah so then there's the data provider uh, and then so in the data provider the main thing here uh, I guess it's pointless to look at this because I didn't commit the, the previous change previously the code to actually instantiate the webhook um, and or the, the web socket rather um, and to uh, handle any kind of events and those details, that was all implemented inside of this, uh, this method to describe the task status. And so I was thinking about this and I couldn't think of anything better um, in terms of something that I would want to implement right now. So what I ended up doing was uh, using a singleton pattern and bringing up some of that that object oriented programming style stuff, but a, a, a singleton pattern to define, um, to, to get rather uh, a web socket. So I have this GT, GT stands for Chloe Telegram. That's, that's, that's the name of the project. Uh, it seemed good enough. Um, and so inside of this websocket.ts file is then that next layer down. So we have the button uh, component, and then we have the hook uh, that it uses, and then we have the data provider, the React admin data provider that the hook uses, and then the uh, the data provider uses this the singleton pattern uh, class, and the way this works is we just just 
uh, say, hey, if window.websocket isn't defined, go ahead and put instantiate a new WebSocket. Um, and then uh, whatever is in window.websocket, return it. Can we, can we do this? It helps if I spell it right. Can we have a private constructor? I guess so. Cool. So we have a proper singleton, right? The only way to get a hold of an instance of uh, GT WebSocket is to call get instance and pass the base URL. Um, now, this I guess is fine. Uh, you could imagine something where we have like uh, a map, like we store a map of WebSockets with different base URLs. Um, but we're not doing that. That's not really necessary. There aren't different base URLs. Um, I think this is fine. Uh, mostly. Okay. And then, so most of the code that in the last coding stream was in the, uh, data provider in here is now inside of uh, the constructor here, right? So we're gonna do some logging. We're gonna instantiate a WebSocket. We're gonna add an event listener. Um, the 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 what, what is the point of having this abstraction? Well, a couple things. One, I wanted to move. I wanted to abstract away the creation of the WebSocket out of the data provider, so that it could be a singleton, aka if you don't know what a singleton is, a singleton is the idea of, hey, I need this object, but there should only ever be one of it. So if it doesn't already exist, if it's not already set up, go ahead and create it. If it's created, just give it to me, the thing that was previously created. Don't create more of them. Um, it's a, there can only be one uh, sort of Highlander uh, situation um, in reverse, I guess. <laughs> we, we don't create more than one. Um, not that they, they, they go hunt each other down anyway. Uh, so then, um, the, the point of having the singleton though, is it makes it easy to say, okay, well I have this, this object. Um, and then in the data provider, I can just say, Hey, what, whatever the instance is, go ahead and subscribe to it. Right. So, and then it, it passes in this callback that's passed in from uh, from the hook into the data provider into the subscribe method. Uh, and the point of this is that previously what was happening was uh, this subscribe to task status, we didn't have a way to have this being called multiple times. Like a component could be mounted and then unmounted and remounted again which is what happens in React when you're using uh, what strict mode, right? Um, in, in dev mode, the component will be unmounted and remounted just to make sure that you are handling that case, um, which is helpful because it really illustrates, you know, the kind of the, the, the thing that I had before was kind of naive in that. So what we would end up doing would be we would open a WebSocket and then um, the component would be unmounted and we were providing a way to unsubscribe so the component uh, would get unmounted the WebSocket uh, callback to unsubscribe would get called that would disconnect the WebSocket and then the component when mounted again would need to reconnect and it didn't seem like the the browser liked that kind of churn that was that was the impression I was getting from what was going on um, so by moving this to a singleton we can say, hey, uh, when you're calling this, go ahead and just get the WebSocket. Um, I think conceptionally a problem here is that this is just the general, the WebSocket, and here it's a, here this is about task status, right? So it's kind of, um, I think to be more, consistent, we might also call this the task status WebSocket or something like that, 
because it can't really be used for anything else. Um, well, not necessarily. We could do some things like uh, if we needed if we needed to use the one one web socket for multiple things. What I could probably do is instead of directly passing the callback, I could wrap this in a function that would check the kind of events coming from the web socket and then filter them and pass them to callback. So maybe this is fine uh, and could be used if we need other things, as long as it's the same web socket that's used for multiple purposes. Now that becomes a problem when we think about the fact that the web socket on the back end is being provided by the task API microservice. Um, so that there's a question of how that might be structured if we need to do other things. But right now, we don't need to do other things. Uh, so I'm just not gonna worry about it. Uh, right, so anyway, the, the explanation continues, right? So this needs the ability to, um, let's, let's come back to here. So here's subscribe. So that's the method that's being called in data provider. And it takes the callback and what it does is it pushes the callback onto a list uh, in the instance, a list of callbacks. Um, and then when, uh, then it returns a function, like an unsubscribe function. And what this does is it uh, changes the, the subscription list to remove, um, to only take <laughs> subscriptions that aren't equal to callback. So it'll remove the callback from the list and update subscriptions. Uh, there's other ways you could do this. You could do uh, like splice and then get the index with uh, fine index and, and that, but this, this is okay. Um, and so inside of here, we add an event listener for message and we have this, this handy function here that will parse the message and then for each subscription, uh, it calls that callback and passes that message. So it kind of can uh, theoretically fan out to multiple subscribers, which means if we had multiple components that were all calling subscribe to task status, passing in different callbacks, that they would all um, be added to that subscribers list and get invoked from the single WebSocket. So we wouldn't have multiple WebSockets being instantiated in the client. Now, that's all well and good. Hey, look, we can get we can get a message. But then uh, we were disconnected from the tasks WebSocket for some reason. Uh, and I think we need to do more here, right? So this, this got invoked. Um, So, what did we do? I think... I wonder if they're... Let's open the MDN reference. There are events, there are instance methods. Right, there's a close event. A close event is sent to clients using WebSockets when the connection is closed. I think it's a little bit bigger. Uh, this is delivered to the listener indicated by the WebSocket objects on close attribute. It's a code. And I suppose the code is specified in the spec because I think the code that we saw was 1006. Yeah. Was clean. Uh, okay, so was clean, must return a value, it was initialized to. Uh, represents whether the connection was closed cleanly or not. Code attribute must return the value, it was initialized to the website connection closed, code provided by the server. Okay, cool. There was no reason provided by the server. So, um, oh, maybe the service? No, the service wouldn't necessarily restart. I don't know why the connection was closed, but we do need to handle this and like reconnect. And it's clear 
Um, oh, cool. Hot up, hot updated. Uh, unsubscribing. Uh, that's interesting. Where's that unsubscribing message coming from? Uh, not from here. Let's figure out, like, okay, here we go. Okay, before we call unsub, so when the when the component is unmounted, uh, and that propagates through our hook, that will then um, unsubscribe. So let's add another console log here. There we go. Kind of the opposite of that, so we can see both in action. So you can see, yeah, look, now we hot updated. So we unsubscribed because the component was unmounted and then subscribed because the component was, was mounted after the, the hot update. Um, but that doesn't really address the fact that our connection is dead, right? So we're not actually doing anything here when, uh, well, good and bad, right? Like we're not tearing anything down, but the WebSocket itself is probably torn down at this point. I think what we need to do is say, if, if we, if, if the connection is closed, what we need to do is, um, can we reconnect? So we can do this, but that creates a new WebSocket. And then we have to set up all the event handlers again. And if, if, if you're going to do everything all over again, Maybe that's not the right way of doing that. So uh, clear out this object. Um, yeah, so our type. So in TypeScript, if you wanna be able to put stuff on window, well, window is this window type, right? Uh, and, and global this. Um, so it doesn't include any extra things. So if you want to add uh, your whatever to the window, you can do that. Uh, this, of course, this type is a lie because before this code gets run, this is this is not this doesn't exist. Um, there we go. Now, now this will be tr uh, true, right? Because it could be not present on window which is the same thing as setting it to undefined. Um, so that will be the only... Hmm. A problem with doing this this way. There is a problem with doing this this way, which is that there may be things out there that still have an instance of GT WebSocket, right? the the component the um um let's let's think about this the rendered component Uh, what am I trying to say? So, so basically, like generally speaking, if you, if you, if there is one thing that refers to, you know, some some data, in this case, like an instance, an object uh, of this class, and we remove that reference to it, then it just it gets garbage collected. It goes away. Um, but there may still be things that are active that are still referring to this this uh, instance of this object that has this internal WebSocket that is closed and is never going to give an event. And those subscriptions will persist and this and that and whatever. So instead of, so what I was thinking was you could imagine um, just like tearing this down and then just creating a new instance of GT WebSocket by invoking like 
basically calling get instance again. Um, the issue with doing that is that um, that's not gonna address, like there's not, we'd have to like copy the subscribers in, I guess, or signal out that things need to be reconstructed. I don't think any of that is necessary, right? The the link between the, the subscribers uh, and the WebSocket is really that subscriptions list that's already part of this class. And, and that's separate from uh, the web socket here. So I think what I'm going to do instead is move some of the um, some of the logic here out of the constructor so that I can call it from the constructor and in this event listener. Hmm. Because I do want to reconnect to the WebSocket. That is what I want to do. Um, so, or, yeah, because you can't, for instance, you can't uh, do something like this dot constructor. I'm not surprised by that. Oops. I like this idea of having a connect. I don't know if it would be... Um, let's, let's make a, uh, a private static method. Now, do we, honestly, this could just be a function. Let's not, let's not go fully into uh, uh, the oop. I'm just gonna take all of that and we're going to create a, uh, a function that we won't export. And it'll be very private because it won't be accessible. Um, call it connect, uh, base URL, yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not willing to really throw away everything that I've written, so let's just take this and we'll say const ws equals new WebSocket. Uh, we get rid of all the this is right. So we just uh, these functions close over the reference to ws, so that it'll have all of these things will have um, know about ws. I wonder. Um, we could do this a different way, actually. If we don't want to have to worry about that, right? We can just say this. Bam. So now this is that WebSocket. Um, we don't know about subscriptions. Hmm. about this like we need to have the ability to get to the list of subscriptions um, at the point in time where we get the event the message event so we can't for instance just pass the the list of subscribers the subscri subscriptions to connect uh, because that would be kind of static right we could pass in 
uh, ref no, we can't even pass in like the the object because we'll be calling this from the the constructor, so the object won't exist yet. Um, So, I've convinced myself that yes, we will, we will need to have this as a method on the class. Give me a private method, uh, not static. And yes. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this this way. And then um, what we can do is we can say this.subscriptions uh, in the arrow function, we don't mask the this. So this here refers to the whole, the, the instance we're working in of the GT WebSocket. Now, That's fine. Um, and then on the close event, we call this.connect uh, again, which is going to create a, a new web socket. I guess I will say, so what I'm gonna do, instead of having um, connect uh, set, the uh, the web socket on the the object. I'm gonna have it just return uh, a web socket, and then all of this is fine. And we just need to return WS. Okay, and then this dot connect base URL. Voila. Okay, so will it work? Maybe. Uh, let's refresh. All right, so a bunch of activity. We subscribe and uh, subscribe to the task status, subscribing to task WebSocket, unsubscribing, subscribing, subscribing. The two connects aren't great, like that shouldn't have happened. Connected to tasks WebSocket. Where is that coming from? Right here. So this get ca got called twice. I'm gonna move this into the connect here. And then Let's do that. So we got another connected message. Seems odd. That shouldn't happen because. Okay, let's refresh. Interesting. So this is coming from our hook, and then it makes it to the WebSocket, right? So the hook calls into the data provider, the data provider calls our class, uh, and that sets itself up, and then the hook gets unmounted and then remounted. And then we get to subscribing to tasks WebSocket a second time. So connect is called a second time, which means uh, let's let's add another console log here. Console K 
Okay. How many times does this get, this get called? Um, do I have that extension? I used to have an extension for looking up emoji. Maybe it's not installed inside of... Uh, there we go. Not installed inside of WSL. It's very helpful to have uh, <laughs> something that helps uh, helps you like visually notice uh, when things are different. Right, so I want to I want to I want to be able to quickly see the difference between this log and this log. Very nice. Um, there we go. So, yeah, so let's let's clear that and refresh that. Okay. So we see getting websock instance, subscribing, things happen. Getting websock instance uh, and subscribing. Okay, interesting. So that means that this is true multiple times. Okay. Yeah, it's undefined. Okay, let's try this again. Like what, what should happen is that the first time we get here, yeah, WebSock is undefined. The second time we get here, uh, window.websocket should be defined. What's up with that? Uh, undefined is, no, 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 same thing, right? So how can that be the case? How can we have lost window? Oh, hey, hey, look, there's a bunch of errors that I had not, that I had filtered out uh, for some reason. All right, this this.ws is undefined in connect. Uh, yeah, so that was probably, yep, my fault. Um, Yep, that's good. But this is so when we pass through this, because this this is called from the constructor, this that ws may not exist, um, which means that that type should probably be that. Right, because then if we if we if we had that type like that, and if I would have done something like this, then we would have gotten an error. It could have been possibly undefined, which is why, you know, ideally, I'd want the setup stuff to be inside of the constructor. Um, now I'm in a situation where I must call this method <laughs> in the constructor uh, and set this, but when connect is running. Um, this that WS may not be set. Uh, which is, yeah, okay. It helps to, um, that there's a lesson here, I feel, <laughs> about the fact that, hey, you know, let, well, let's, 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 before I get ahead of myself, let's see if this has addressed the thing. There we go. So, first time undefined, second time, uh, is defined. And so we don't, Re, we don't subscribe to the task uh, WebSocket a second time. So good. Um, right. So seeming impossible thing, it's because there was an error and I was just not showing errors. All right. And then something failed. Firefox can't establish a connection to the server. Um, is this the same error that we saw before? No, we didn't see an error before. We just saw a disconnect. 
Oh, right, because I was filtering out errors. Right. Hey, but look. So, um, but code 1006, reason blank. So we were seeing this, right? But we weren't seeing the error because I had errors turned off. So we just saw the disconnect. Okay, well, having it reconnect is good. I want that. Um, and the way I've set this up will mean that if it was able to reconnect, um, like everything would still be subscribed and the front end components would still be getting their, their, their events. So it was clean false. So what's going on in, in Docker land? Mm, excuse me. So this is provided by the task API. Much happening there. Uh, 48, 13, 18. So nothing really going on here. Yeah, status 101. Axum sort of connection closed. Huh. What's up with that? Um. Speaking of, of garbage collection, some stuff here on the spec about that. Uh, close event, ping and pong frames. The WebSocket protocol defines ping and pong frames that can be used for keep alive. Uh, user agents may send ping and unsolicited pong frames as desired. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, must not use pings or unsolicited pongs to aid the server. It's assumed the service will solicit pongs wherever appropriate for the server's needs. Okay. Do we have information about codes? Like I see a code 1015. Uh, in all of these cases, the website connection, connection close code would be 1006. What was, was that the code? 1006. Uh, user agents must not convey any failure information to scripts in a way that would allow a script to distinguish the following situations. Host name not resolve. Uh, packets cannot be successfully routed. Refuse connection on specified port. Failed to correctly perform TLS handshake. Uh, did not complete opening. Uh, because it's not a WebSocket server. WebSocket server sent a correct opening handshake, but specified option caused the client to drop the connection. Uh, server specified a sub protocol the client did not offer. WebSocket server abruptly closed connection after successfully completed opening handshake. In all of these cases, the WebSocket connection close code would be 1006, as required by WebSocket protocol. RFC. Uh, updated by a bunch of things. F1006. The reserved value must not be set, set as a status code in a closed control frame by an endpoint. It's designated for use in applications expecting a status code to indicate connection was closed abnormally without sending or receiving a closed control frame. So is this is this a, an Nginx thing? Like is Nginx doing something that's dropping the connection? Um, because this does work and then it just stops getting data. Uh, let's see here. We hey look, upstream timed out. Operation timed out while reading response header from upstream. Uh, oh, it's gone. Okay, so <laughs> uh, nginx proxy uh, web socket 
there's probably settings that I'm missing in my Nginx config because I I don't know that I've ever like I've used WebSockets like I've set up services but I don't think I've ever um, set up like Nginx to proxy a WebSocket like this. Uh, all right, so this is this is the stuff that I had added that had started to make it work. Uh, let's see, F5, Nginx is a WebSocket proxy, WebSocket proxying, Nginx news. Turn on a connection between client and server, HTTP 1.1 in a WebSocket, protocol switch mechanism is available. So we have upgrade and connection upgrade. Um, connection will be closed if the proxy server does not transmit any data within six seconds. Can I, uh, proxy read timeout? Alternatively, the proxy server can be configured to pre periodically send WebSocket ping frames to reset the timeout, check if the connection is still alive. I thought um, we were doing that. Right, so in um, control P, task API, uh, main.rs. So we have uh, WS handler, and then we handle socket. And then to handle socket, we don't need to. Let's see, where are we setting up the, hand, the, the routes? Task WS, WS handler. Um, handle socket on upgrade. Is there something more that I need to do here with like WS? Or do I need to implement the, the ping uh, and pong stuff inside of handle socket? There's a question. So like right now, so if I need to do that, I would need to pretty, well, I would need to make some changes to this. I think maybe we could just look at the Axum docs. Um, I mean, I could just change the timeout. That's an option. Um, let's see, Axum uh, web socket um, thing. So this is the example that we were looking at before. Uh, here's uh, some discussion about Axum and WebSockets as well. Read from WebSocket. Uh, hmm. mm -hmm. So automatically respond to pings. Yeah, so that's that's like if we're worried about the client sending a ping and we pong back, but it seems like maybe that's not happening often enough to satisfy the uh, the timeout on the connection. So option one, I just disable the timeout. Option two, I have a timer inside of the handler that then sends a ping back to the client. I'm gonna go for the thing that's gonna be like a one-liner here, I think. Uh, proxy read uh, Can I can I just disable it? Is that an option? Off. Okay, cool. 
uh, and then let's uh, Docker Compose up. And uh, I'm gonna take a break here, I'm gonna stretch my legs, and uh, that's it. <laughs> Running out, and I'll be back in a couple minutes. BRB.